The artist Kate Bourdain has an uncanny ability to see sounds of specific colors and shapes. On today's show, we'll learn about this unusual phenomena called synesthesia and how it impacts her unique and beautiful paintings. If you enjoy watching, please use the little hand to give it a like, leave a comment, and share the link with your friends. And now, today's episode of Alan Gorman's 15 Minutes of Fame Art TV Show. So I met uh, Kate uh, Bourdon uh, in a online workshop uh, that I took, oh, maybe seven, eight, ten years ago. Um, and then uh, I also had the good fortune of um, showing with her uh, at a wonderful um, event called Art Prize in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, and I met with uh, Kate in her studio and uh, we've been friends ever since and uh, I'm happy to um, chat today uh, with uh, Kate uh, Bourdon. Hi Kate. Hi Alan, it's great to see you. Yeah, welcome uh, to the show. Thanks. So let's jump in. So, so as, a, as a little girl, um, you love to draw and uh, listen to music. Um, well, but then you chose music first. Um, well, I should have been born as twins because they're equal passions. And uh, um, I've been drawing as long as I could pick up a crayon or a pencil in my hands. And my mother uh, was a piano major. And uh, of course, I probably was hearing her practicing in the womb. And so music has been a big part of my life. And she always was practicing when I was a little girl. So on top of that, um, my uncle is a professional artist. So I was just surrounded by art and music and those wonderful things. So your, your mother, um, classical music or? Mm -hmm. Classical. And, and, what, and what kind of paintings did your uncle do? He uh, experimented a little bit. So with, you know, abstract and so forth, but for the, the majority of his lifetime, He's um, done these wonderful watercolor, deep, luscious color, not, not the, the old lady watercolor that we think of sometimes, but of um, still lives. Um, he had an accident with his eye when he was a young kid. And uh, so he's only got vision in one eye, but he had explained to me that really that helped with his paintings because um, he's able to see things in a 2D way that you only could with one eye. And so that's why he's able to flatten form so well. So when I was young, he talked about the, that importance of seeing things as shapes. So a coffee cup isn't a coffee cup. It is, uh, you know, a flat um, kind of cylinder and then connected to the shapes around that. Uh, so, so were you drawn to, um paintings that were about form and shape or, or were you more drawn to pictorial things when you were little? Uh, the first drawing that I remember that, that my, my mother has in the scrapbook is a pencil drawing and I'm, uh, she's marked on there three years old when I did this. And it was a, basically a stick figure of a woman, but one of her legs is huge and drawn almost like a big elongated triangle. And my mother said, tell me about this. And I said, well, it's a lady. And she said, well, what's, what's wrong with her leg? Oh, she broke it dancing, of course. And so she wrote that on the bottom of that. That was my title of my she piece. Broke it da dancing, of course. Oh. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I always loved to draw people and when i was in middle school i was a, in a catholic school and always doodling on the sides of my papers my homeworks and which the nuns weren't happy about i shouldn't have been doing that but quite often i would um sketch without my classmates knowing it their profiles uh because i'm just you know was intrigued with that okay so so but and, and your 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 painting 
today are, are much more about form and yes. shapes and colors and uh, uh, rhythms than they are about uh, objects. <laughs> um, uh, now, now they are. So let's fast forward into high school. I um, was in band, played the flute, and desperately wanted to take an art class, but I couldn't because I was already in band and there's no uh, other room for um, an art class because I was That's on the so college cool. track. So, and, so parochial, you know? I mean, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. definitely. And uh, you know, my father was, you know, guiding my um, education at the time. And of course, on the fast track for college and uh, I had to take language and math. And so there, was, there wasn't room for that. But I continued to draw because I, I love to draw. And uh, well, now I'm in college as a music major, music education major, and uh, went to the counselor and said, I'm ready to take an art class. And he said, well, you can, but it's not going to fit in your curriculum because you're already a fine arts major being music. If you want to go ahead and pay the tuition credits, it's not going to count for anything. So that was frustrating. <laughs> like, oh, I keep, I want to learn how to become a better artist. So fortunately, after I graduated, uh, uh, it, it, I'm sorry, but it that's so stupid. <laughs> that's so stupid. I mean, you know, college is is a uh, is preparing you for the next phase of your life and what you're going to do. Um, and why should they be so rigid? Uh, it should be a time of exploration. Oh, it should be a time of exploration. And uh, it, was, it was very frustrating. What makes you really, really unique uh, is uh, synesthesia. Uh, and um, uh, I tell a story about listening to your mom's music and having her quiz you on composers. I love that. <laughs> okay. So, of course, my mom was always playing. Her great love is Bach and Johann Sebastian Bach. And um, so she, but she would play other um, music, of course, as well. But uh, one day, I, I was fairly young, probably that six year old age. And she said, I'm going to play you a couple of pieces. I'm going to see if you can guess who the composer is. And so she played, and while she was playing, I'm seeing geometric lines and shapes that are interlocking and crisscrossing and like grids and, uh, of course, with the colors. And she said, so who is that? And I said, that's Bob. And she said, how did you know that? And I said, well, because this music always has these geometric grids and they interlock and they, I can see these squares and these zigzags and so forth. And so then she played a little bit of Beethoven and she said, well, who's this? And I said, well, that's Beethoven. How do you know that? And she said, and I said, because it's, um, I can see all these wavy lines that are kind of hairy and the colors are different. They're deeper and darker. And uh, she just looked at me kind of strangely and um, didn't, you know, pursue that any further, but um, it just seemed easy to me to tell who the composer was because of that. So you, you thought that was a normal thing for kids to kind of listen to a sound and, and see something? Yes, yeah. Yeah. I remember when I was in grade school, uh, I guess I had a pretty savvy teacher who had us as an exercise listen to some classical music. I don't remember what it was and visualize what the composer had in mind or whatever. Oh, wonderful. That's and a I, wonderful and I, exercise. And I, I would, you know, uh, envision a, a rider on the horizon galloping across a field and blue skies and stuff like that. But I don't have the same, uh, I, don't, I don't have quote unquote synesthesia. So uh, could you, for our viewers, uh, explain what that is and how 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 you how you found out. I mean, now fast forward to college, and okay. I'm standing there talking to my roommate. We were going to have a um, 
a, a quiz on uh, ear training. That's where they would play and you would have to uh, write the rhythm and the melody out as you know, a few measures are being played. And uh, I said, well, it's somewhat easy for me because um, at least the most vivid for me is um, when they're playing D major, that's always sky blue. And my roommate looked at me like I was from another planet. And she said, what are you talking about? And I said, well, what are the colors of your scales? And she said, I don't know what you're talking about. And, but she was intrigued. You know, we talked about the colors of my scales and so forth. And it's just was kind of serendipity. It was about a week later, we were in our music history class together. And the professor was talking about, I believe it was Scriabin, a composer in the early 20th century, and said that his uh, music was related to his color sense and that the notes had colors and so forth. And my roommate shot her hand up and said, oh, Kate has the same thing. And the professor said, well, that's called synesthesia. Um, so I, it sounded like a disease. It's not, it's, it's, a, it's a great um, blessing, actually gift, yeah. Gift. And uh, for those that don't know what synesthesia is, it's a crossing of the senses. And the five senses are located very close together in the brain. And um, my understanding is that as a child grows, those little connections become disconnected and severed in some way so that when you um, hear, you're just hearing or you're just seeing or whatever. But in the case of a synesthete, those connections are still there. And my strongest one is uh, seeing and hearing are, are uh, very, very strong. The brain, the brain is really interesting. I the mean, brain is fascinating. Uh, there's a wonderful um, YouTube channel that I uh, fell across called Listening In, um, which is about uh, music and uh, visuals. And there's one episode about uh, Kandinsky uh, called What Does Color Sound Like? Uh, and, and that's uh, wonderfully um, educative and there's lots of stuff on synesthesia on on youtube so people can look it up and learn about it but it's uh, fascinating how people uh, actually i mean you know maybe some of you see um uh, s uh sound as 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 a visual phenomenon with the color or shape or or whatever or 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 music is a smell. I don't really know. Uh, but, um, or, or you taste something, I don't know. <laughs> but um, it, that's, it, it, it's really interesting. So how, how do you think that creeps into your work? Oh, Visual. it definitely creeps into my work. And, and mentioning Kandinsky before, um, when I, before I knew that he um, linked color and sound, I was immediately attracted to his paintings. Just Kandinsky is my first love. And um, it wasn't he until long after. Whole, he did a whole series of paintings that were actually symphonic, that were, uh, were different, different, uh, all different, all different styles that were actually informed by uh, sound. And his, uh, in his theories, uh, he, he basically said that, that music is the, the, the purest form of abstraction. And I, I, I kind of think he's right. You know, what we do as visual artists is, um, oh, we're informed by outside influences all the time, you know, by what we see and the visual information we take in. And then we're, even if we're, doing abstract painting or, or figurative painting or representational, representational painting, uh, it, it's informed by our, our, our sight and our, our memories uh, and our uh, reaction to those memories. But music, when people create music, I mean, they're, they're not, it's, it's, it's purely internal. And it's pure, and it's, and it's kind of like abstract expressionism uh, was in the '60s, where artists are kind of bringing it out from their soul. And I'm so uh, enthralled by that, 
and uh, uh, and we have a completely emotional response to that sound. As you're as you're talking, um, I'm reminded of whenever I hear Samuel Barber's adagio for sp uh, strings. You know, not every piece of music I hear is filled with color and shapes and lines. And I guess for me, that's it tells me that that's a good piece of music or not. But that piece is just so incredibly rich with the deepest uh, color and the shapes and the lines. And, and what, see, I even get emotional talking about it, what it does to you emotionally. I just, I start to weep every time I hear it. What is that? I don't, I don't know what that human response is to just well, a so combination many, there's, of notes. So many changes in it, and, uh, you know, it builds and it crescendos and then you know, the quiet moments and it's, it, uh, and it's so it's beautiful. It, it's uh, an amazing piece, piece of music. Uh, and interesting because it probably came at a time where yeah, it was 20th and century. Early from Barber, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I had that, um, usually when I see art, um, I'll, I'll have an emotional response, but not as deep as that until I went um, to France and saw Monet's water lilies at the Longerie. And I walked in and I walked up for the first panel and I just the tears were coming down and I and it I'm getting shivers talking about that because um, those had the reverse effect it was a sound power and emotionalism and something you know that was the same there uh, so, so when you see something you hear it yeah so I will get a, a, a you know I don't hear that as like a, a composition, a full composition. I will quite often hear it, depending on the shapes and the pattern and the rhythm that's there, I will hear a percussive sound. And if it's an overall overwhelming color, let's just say it is sky, a lot of sky blue in the painting, I will hear the major chords. And um, depending on the rhythm in, in the painting, you know, little arpeggiated sequences and, percussive sounds and things like that. You, usually uh, I, I, I have to have an excuse to show your work. Okay. And I'm gonna do something uh, that's a little different that I've never done before. Uh, I, I usually find a piece of music to kind of accompany the little um, a slideshow or whatever. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose some of your images, you know, maybe half a dozen, eight. And I'm gonna give you an exercise that we're gonna do uh, in post-production. Uh, I'm gonna ask you to maybe um, kind of on the piano or some whatever instrument you want to, uh, and we'll lay it in as a bed, uh, play me what you see. Oh, great. So mm -hmm. this will be post-production then? Yes, we'll do that okay. in post-production, okay? So, so, so here goes.
your, your, first of all, the paintings are, are lovely. I mean, you just, they're so romantic and, and, and draw me in, uh, um, especially. Oh, thanks, Alan. Yeah. What? I said, thanks, Alan. <laughs> oh, come on. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. I just find a connection to, to you and your work. I don't know why it's not nothing to do with what I do, but uh, it it just um, there's a, a generosity and a um, and a joy uh, to creation uh, in the work. And I was listening to a podcast about your process and um, how how you how the pa paintings are. Oh, they're almost symphonic, like 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 Kandinsky, where you're kind of layering, and and uh, you might uh, put a painting aside for a while, and then go back to it and find some other stuff, and so they they're very kind of rich and deep. So, could you could I talk about your your process a little bit? I, for a while, I felt like I had. Uh... A, the artist's response of um, Munchausen by proxy disease, where I wanted to kill my darlings <laughs> and, and always uh, cover up my first response and kind of start again. And then I would start again and start again. And pretty soon I had this wonderful uh, layers of texture that I could go from there. Finally, there was just this inner voice that said, okay, put this here, put that there. And um, now I was able to kind of get on my way uh, in, the, in this painting. And when I look backwards, and it's only, um, it's only at looking backwards that you kind of understand what's, what's going on, I, that I thought, this is uh, so much like life for anybody. You've got lots of stops and starts and starts and stops. And pretty soon after the, the years add up, this is the journey of your life. And I realized this is the way I do paintings. It, it's, a, it's a journey. The process is a journey. And you just keep pushing yourself. And, keep pushing and, yourself and plugging ahead. And even on days that I'm not inspired, I go in there and do yeah, something. Sometimes you just sit there and stare. And yeah, there's a lot of staring. <laughs> yeah, a lot of stare. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, what, what are you working on now? Well, right now, I, I tease people when I say this, I'm working on my swamp series. Uh, they're really marshlands. But uh, when... Can I smell? <laughs> I don't have this smelling kind of synesthesia. <laughs> no, okay. And, and the swamps around here, actually, they, they, don't, they don't smell. And right now I'm living, um, well, the name of the road is Green Creek Road, but it's right off of this beautiful marshland that is a part of Green Creek. And I pass by it every day and I pass the a causeway that is over marshland that uh, heads to Muskegon Lake and then out to Lake Michigan. And this marshland is all around me. And um, it, it's seeping into my brain. I'm not thinking about it. It's definitely unconscious and this is you know, how it works with art and I'm passing by and I'm seeing that the colors are different every time of day that I pass by from morning to afternoon to evening. Yeah. And along with it, as the light kind of rakes across, you know, the clouds pass by, there's this, this little kind of a chromatic scale thing that happens with the changing light. And it's so fascinating. Um, and my, uh, this painting that I had started last summer, it was uh, started at 10 years ago. I didn't know what it was going to be, just put on layers. And I'm looking at it in a couple of days thinking, oh, this is kind of like what I'm seeing each day. It's kind of like marsh land. There's a lot of strokes and they're very percussive. I'm hearing this, but -da -da, da -da 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 -da, you know, it's going on with the reeds and and that um, kind of thing. And so that, that was my start. So for this past year, 
I've been working on my uh, Marsh series and intentionally and also unintentionally, I need them to have sound power for them to be good for me. I think all your paintings have sound power with the, you know, uh, they're quite lovely. So, um, I, I, so um, if you um, rack your brain, what, what are what are four four pieces that really stand out for you that you that, that, that you're proud of? That you, you you think are have that sound quality? The sound quality. Well, this this uh, evening march that was the first in the series. Um, I'm really proud of that. There's a, a painting that I had an art prize uh, a few years ago at um, art event in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And it's, uh, <laughs> let me think of the title of it. Um, it's called uh, Le Jean Rose, uh, La Vie en Jean Rose, which is um, in French would be Life in Yellow Roses. And um, I think that painting, I started realizing with that painting that, oh, my synesthesia is entering the paintings. I didn't realize that before, but that was the one where I realized that uh, subconsciously that was happening because um, there's a lot of sound power in there with these, these, the petals of the roses are kind of broken into what for me would sound like a glass wind chime it has that kind of sound in it and it's on a striped a tablecloth now this is what i like to call semi-abstract because you can recognize these are roses that there are still life objects but i'm really flattening the shapes going back to my uncle uh, because those shapes to me have have sound power there's a bam of a, a timpani drum or there's the sound of symbols or, you know, that kind of thing. But the, the striped tablecloth that I did is definitely this piano keys of, the, you know, going, going through that. So I, that, that painting I'm really proud of. Uh, so, so I'll go, uh, one more, give me, give me another one. Oh, okay. So, um, do you mind if I mentioned when women were birds? Because no, that, I love when women were. Birds. Okay, so and and that when um, that when had, my son, my youngest son saw it, and he said, "Now he doesn't have synesthesia. He's a musician though." And he said, "Boy, do I hear Gershwin, um, American in Paris when when really? I when I see this, yeah." <laughs> Yeah, and, and you know, that's a figurative work. And then, Alan, you know that painting, so. Yeah, I know. Well, that's a beautiful painting. And then, yeah, I did the follow up with that woman with the tambourine. Uh -huh. I don't know what it was called. What was, <laughs> what's that one? What's that the, one? The um, Stepping to a New Tune. Yeah, a great title. Uh -huh. you know, she looks so happy. And she... Yeah, I was. Uh, that one was definitely a, a self portrait emotionally because I felt like I was stepping out artistically uh and it was about and literally <laughs> yeah and about the time of my retirement loved teaching music absolutely adored teaching music and i, I still teach privately because i love teaching so much but um to be able to finally put all my energy into artwork so is uh, art prize still in existence are they still yes doing yeah. They're now doing it every two years. And so this is a year for art prize. And um, in the last podcast, you know, I was asked this question, you know, is there any great project that you would like to do? And I threw this out there because, um, and it's been this little seed in my brain for a long time that I would love to do some collaborative synesthesia project with somebody who's um, really good with computers and technical things because I'm not good with that so that maybe the people at our price could put you together with one of those sound lab kind of uh, people yeah yeah and, and then be able to have that Do kind of installation and, mm -hmm. and here's an idea why don't you approach uh, dance dance companies 
And, oh, yeah. yeah. That'd be wonderful. Maybe That'd you be do fun. something where you do uh, the, the, the piece informs a set. That, that's wonderful. I love that idea. And set design, yeah, sure. Um, okay, uh, last question. Um, you know, wherever this takes us, um, how would you like to how would you like to be described if if uh, somebody had to write a or, or memorialize you? What, what, what do you want them to say? I, I guess I ho hope that people would say that I was a. Th this is hard as an artist because as an artist we have to be some, quite selfish with our time. Um, yes. We are. Yeah. And, and that's the last thing I ever want to be considered is to be a selfish person. I like to be con considered as being generous um, with people. But um, so I hope that through the years with my own children and, and teaching and, and now with, with my art, that um, it, it was out of generosity. That's what I get from your work. Your work is terribly generous. Yeah. So, so check out Kate and 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 uh, you all. You like Kate, right? Yeah. Everybody calls okay, me Kate. Yeah, so Kate or Katie, either one. So oh. check out Katie. I like Katie too. K -k -k Katie. Oh yes, uh, that was. <laughs> I, actually, uh, my, my first apartment. Um, I uh, it was in Brooklyn, and I uh, um, it was in a in a brownstone, and and and. Uh, in the basement, there were a bunch of 78 records and there must have been like 80 copies of Cook a Cacati. Oh was, my goodness, that's you know, an old World War I yeah, song. Yeah, World War I song about, you know, coming back to his, his love. <laughs> um, so uh, Alan, there's a picture of me with my cousin next to me and I'm about three. He's about four, and I've got my fingers in my ears because he's singing that song and I would oh, be so <laughs> I'd be so embarrassed. I was always so embarrassed when anybody would sing me that song. All right. So um I thank you very, very much for for uh meeting with us. Um, You're welcome. This is fun. Everybody go uh check out uh K Katie's uh wonderful work and uh, follow her and uh, stay informed and uh, uh we'll see you around the block. Well, thank you, Ellen, and thank you, everybody, for, for watching and listening. Okay, bye. I hope you enjoyed today's show, and I invite you to watch some other episodes on my YouTube channel. Leave a comment if you're inclined to, and click on the red subscribe button so you'll never miss another episode of Alan Gorman's 15 Minutes of Fame Art TV Show. My 15 Minutes of